your babies. Hi. Sorry. Hi. Good morning. Oh, you look so beautiful. Where's Mingo? Hi, Mingo. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Want to go downstairs and have some breakfast? Mm. Hey, buddy. Hey. Let's go have breakfast. Let's go. <laughs> Be the first one to eat. Hi. Mango's usually the hungriest in the morning, so she's the first to always jump and eat. Yes, you are. I take out their veggies. So I have here fresh vegetables. I just made this. Uh, if you guys want the recipe to this, it is on our Instagram story. It is on our highlights as a chop recipe. But this is their chop for this month. Okay, this is the bowl I mix it in. This is where I serve it. And this tray has all of our additives. So for how much they eat, I usually put about two and a half teaspoons. Or tablespoons, I don't know. About this much in this bowl. They all share the same plate, so that's why how much I give them is different. How much your bird eats will be different as well. Also, keep in mind, with all the additives I put in, uh, it is gonna kind of double in size. So I put half a tablespoon of chia seeds. I put a tablespoon of hemp hearts. Put in half a tablespoon of flax seeds. Flax seeds give it a nutty flavor, something that will hook them on, as well as it is full of omega 3s. So that is great. Uh, we actually just ran out of this today, but I usually would put in a bit of prime powder, mainly for Luca to grow in his feathers better. And then we're gonna mix this up. Okay, then I'm gonna serve it on the plate. And then I just try and spread it out all evenly like this. Like I said, if your birds don't share breakfast, just serve it in their individual bowls. Okay, they got really excited for breakfast time. They're all <laughs> gathering. Excuse me, Kiwi. Let me put it down. Okay, breakfast is served. Look, are you some breakfast? Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Luca's thinking about it. But eventually he will eat vegetables. I think he's just curious about what my mom's doing. She's just right behind me. I like to clean this up first because this does, when it dries, get really hard to clean up. So Luca particularly will usually switch from eating his vegetables to his pellets back and forth. Uh, usually kiwi and mango will do the same and that's just the way they like to do it so that's completely fine with me. Sometimes people mix in the pellets in their vegetables and that's another great way if that's what your bird likes. I know some people uh, like to put fruit in their chop mix. I personally prefer to leave that separate as a treat. Uh, so for now this is just chop and then later in the day you'll see when they get their, uh, their fruit and their treats and kind of like their like little like lunchtime meal. So I will usually sit here on the table passing them back and forth and then they will let me know when they're done. Uh, they'll all kind of like just walk away from the chop, do their own thing and kind of just look at me like, hey, let's go. Right about now, Mango continues to eat uh, and then the Quakers usually get distracted by everything going on outside, which is all the birds coming in to eat. <laughs> he likes to sit up there and just watch them. 
Mango will go up there. She sees blue jays. For some reason, she hates them and will knock on the door with her beak, letting her know that she wants them gone. She's on here and she's screaming at them. And <laughs> she still has vegetables on her beak though. So Mango is usually the first one to want a bath and she screams about it, but we do not go until everybody is finished eating. That is our rule and she's not happy about it. <laughs> They are all done. They have all let me know that we're all done. So we're gonna go upstairs and we're going to take our shower. Yay! So we all like to shower together. That's right. Oh. Okay, so while I just, you know, get undressed, I put them here. Luca, you wanna go? Okay. Sometimes Luca will go immediately here. There you go. Kiwi. Go up here, go, and then mango up here. So they like to interchange from being up there, and then I do have a shower pole which they also like to come down and stand on. I guess because the sunshine is coming in, they just all want to snuggle there. So Mango's usually the only one who likes to take a bath. She just took a really long bath. I'm always careful that when she's dipping herself into the shower screen that uh, her face is out of it. Even if she dips it herself, I still try and pull her away from it, like right now. I caught her at the end of her shower, but she was really cute because she was flopping her wings like in the shower screen, but I only caught the end of it. And these two are hydrophobic. Yeah, you guys don't like the shower. So now that we're done the shower, this time usually dictates what we do next. So if Mango did not take a bath and whoop, and soak herself like she did, then I would usually bring them back downstairs to finish eating vegetables. I like to keep the vegetables and fruits downstairs because, you know, I don't want them tossing it inside my room, especially because there's carpet. So downstairs is easier to clean. But because she is soaking wet, we are going to go to their room. And we are going to check if the sun is coming in, which it should be, because she usually doesn't take a bath unless the sun's coming in. Okay, so it's starting to come in, maybe like in a bit. So I will probably keep them in here for a while since it's still steamy and warm. So she doesn't get cold since it is winter time. Well, it's starting to be winter time in Canada. But then in the meantime, I will probably grab their bowls and fill one up with water and one with pellets and just put it down in their cage. Love to share everything. Okay, now that's set up so I can rest easy bringing them back into the room. In the meantime, they will usually sit there for like 10, 15 minutes until they're ready to come down. They're just, you know, calming down from the nice, sleepy, steamy shower. And then they'll let me know when they're ready to go back, which should be in time for the sun to come into my room. Uh, the sun is still not fully in the room, but it will be. But I brought Mango in because where she's sitting, the sun is hitting her. So she can dry off. And at this point, I will usually go down and eat breakfast myself. Hi, Kiwi. Since um, sometimes I like to share my food, but other times I'm eating food that I don't really want them to be eating as well. Whether because it's too salted, because it's not healthy for them, because it's toxic. So I will usually just leave them here. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go down for breakfast and I'm gonna leave the camera filming because I've always been curious about what they do when I'm gone. So, enjoy. Go be your back, guys. Be your back. Be your back. So I came back upstairs from having breakfast. The sun is definitely hitting a lot more, especially on the tree where Mango is. 
She's right there, receiving sun. She's still a little wet chicken. And these boys <laughs> doing whatever they do. So around this time, we kind of just relax. Um, I have a blanket that's just particularly for them to be on. I don't care if they, you know, bite it, poop on it. Uh, it also just kind of protects them from pooping and biting like the nice sheets. Uh, so about this time, it is 9.10. And we all love to watch TV together. So I will put on Disney Plus or Netflix or just anything of entertainment. <laughs> and then they will usually come and sit with me on the bed while we all just kind of digest our breakfast, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you know the routine. And Kiwi jumped on me. And Mango's usually more of a solitary bird she really just likes her alone time she likes company and to see that you're nearby but most of the day she'll sit and just sunbathe honestly especially if there is sun we do get a little bit of sun from here i will put on the blanket like this luca already knows he likes to sit down kiwi will sit next to luca and then we will look for a show yeah, and then they like to just sit on me, they like to preen and watch movies together. So that is the kind of what we do from like the time that it is right now until the lunchtime. And then I'll show you guys what happens at lunchtime, but right now we're just gonna watch TV and kind of do our own thing. You wanna go play? Wanna go play? Go play. Go, go, go. I don't know why he loves to stick them underneath my closet door and get them stuck there, but that's usually what he does during his day as he uh, plays with random sticks. And then he'll collect more, and then at nighttime when I open my closet, there'll be a lot of sticks inside there. He's a hard worker. Right, Luca? Are you gonna go join him? Are you gonna go play with him? Huh? Are you gonna go play with him, Kiwi? Where are you going? Where are you running off to? Let's go check on Mango. Pretty girl. Hi. Hi. How's the sunshine, Mango? Yeah, it's nice. Kiwi, what are you doing? What are you doing, cutie pie? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to see you. What's your room? Are you so mad? Canta como salta como un conejo. So this is just this toy box that I built for them. <laughs> Mango just took a walnut. So I mainly made it for Luca since he is still recovering his flight ability, but they've all ended up really loving it. Uh, so it's literally just on this little stand. We tied it down and it's two baskets, one to give it height, another just shallow. And I put ladders on both sides so he has access to them. And I just throw a lot of toys in there. Uh, we have a lot of different things that they like to play with. These are uh, jute strings, these are safe for them. Uh, Kiwi just likes to build nests with them. He likes to throw them in there and try and kind of build a nest. Uh, what else do we have? I found these at the dollar store. They just like to play with them. They find them entertaining. Oh, there's Kiwi collecting his nesting material. <laughs> um, I, they love anything made out of wood. So I buy these at the dollar store as well. Just wooden forks that they play with. Uh, we have mini brands in here as well. Oh, Kiwi's getting a little mad that I'm touching his toys. What's wrong? Are you going to go put that inside your... He likes to take things um, and then put them in there. As you can see, he has a he has a stick stuffed in there. 
I don't know how I got that in there. By the end of the day, that's going to be really full. I always take it out before they go to sleep because Mango's not appreciative of it. Um, I as well like to bring them up walnuts. As you can see, Luca has one in his mouth right now. Took a walnut from there. I have a little jar of walnuts there and I just sprinkle them down on the floor so they can just forage them and go explore. I mainly put them on the floor uh, for Luca to as well uh, get his foraging <laughs> instinct down. Uh, especially uh, because Quakers are floor foragers. Mango species is not, but she'll come down for the walnut. She really likes walnuts in general. Shoot. There you went. All right. He loves to play inside that box. Uh, so I know a lot of people will have mixed feelings about anything that resembles a nesting box. And so I do have a video uh, where I do talk more about the gray area of having a nesting box, but I will just cover it over here in the video. Um, the reason why I have a nesting box is because, first of all, Mango um, will only sleep on her belly on flat surfaces. And to Quakers, um, nests are natural to them. It is an instinct of theirs. But here's where the tricky part comes in. Some birds will get territorial and aggressive, as well hormonal with anything that resembles a nesting box. Uh, mine never have. Hey, Luca, want to come over here? Mine never have. They um, they are never territorial over it. I'm allowed to touch it and you know be near it. They don't attack anyone or anything. They also don't become hormonal about it. Uh, they just like to play and see it strictly as like just like a sleeping area. Uh, if they were ever to become hormonal or mango were ever to lay eggs uh, inside it, I would of course 100% remove it. But that's never happened in the two years that we've had it. So it's fine for now. It is kind of like, you know, some people prefer just not to. As well, some birds are just not nesting birds at all. For example, budgies are migratory birds and nesting boxes should only be placed when you want to breed them. Uh, in other cases like Quakers, they are just natural nesters. They will build a nest anyways. So it's just up to you. Just make sure that they're not getting territorial, hormonal, or aggressive about it. And then, you know, aside from that, it's just uh, your judgmental call. It's 11 o'clock and I already have a few bite marks. These are not too bad. Raise a little bit of my skin there. And then these ones were from a mix of yesterday and today. They were pretty cranky yesterday. They're a little bit better today. He's cranky today though. Yes, you are.
Clickers are on my shoulder right now. I'm gonna grab my ankle. <laughs> you wanna go downstairs? Yeah, let's go downstairs. Oh, they're all so excited. Yes. Kitty left. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You don't wanna go finish veggies? Go finish veggies. Go eat some veggies. There you go. I have to go turn out the lights, but right now it is close to lunchtime, so I have brought them back down to finish their veggies since we didn't come down after the shower. Uh, they still have more to finish. As you can see, there's still a lot on their plate. Uh, so they're gonna spend some time down here. We usually spend like an hour or two down here letting them finish up. I let them eat veggies first, and then afterwards I will bring out the fruit plate. So you guys will see me do that, but for now I'm just gonna let them enjoy some vegetables. Who are you knocking to, Mango? One, two. Mango, three, two, <laughs> where are you going? Mango, one, two. Mango, three, two, Mango. There you go, pretty girl. A little bit disobedient, but that's okay. So I did want to include that clip because, <laughs> yeah, you got caught red-handed. It is super normal for within the flock to them to just, you know, um, disagree or argue or just do a little, like, fight like that. Um, and, you know, they also like preen and get along, uh, just like a relationship within people. Sometimes, you know, you argue, sometimes you don't. So I just wanted to let you know that that's totally normal. Uh, it should never pass to the point where they're actually injuring each other. Uh, they just kind of like, I'm looking for the word. Can't think of the word. Uh. But yeah, they'll, they'll sometimes just like kind of bash beaks or just like kind of scream at each other, but uh, it's never gotten to the point where they have tried to bite each other's toes or rip out feathers. If that is occurring, that is definitely not because they are flock bonded. That is just, they are territorial and aggressive and they don't see each other as flock members. So it's really important that either way you are supervising them. Uh, and if I do see a fight is getting a little heated, then I will break it up. Uh, they're usually really easy to break up their fights. I usually just have to like, you know, do a little snap and then call their name. So I'll be like, for example, here's not doing anything, but like Kiwi. Like that, so he like he kind of looked at me like, what did I do? I'm sorry, you didn't, ah, that's my skin. You didn't do anything. I was just showing an example. But aside from that, it's just banter. That's the word. It's just playful banter. So around this time, now that I see that they're all, you know, kind of not that interested in the vegetables anymore, they did eat a lot and like i said luca likes to you know switch in between pellets and vegetables which is totally okay right baby you're so sweet so at this point is when i'm going to start introducing or sorry um giving them some fruits and other treats so we do have 
a variety of treats that I give them while we're down here. Um, one of them is fruits. Uh, the other, uh, I sometimes give them these dried pineapples and papaya treats. These are mango only. <laughs> she's the only one who actually likes these. I use these to bribe her when she's doing something um, that she doesn't isn't supposed to. Uh, they recently have really gotten into Nutri Berries. I bought these because I really wanted to try them out. These are great for people who are trying to switch them over to pellets because they are a blend of pellets, seeds, veggies, and fruits, and a lot of supplements for malnutrition. Mm. For any malnutrition in birds. Hey, okay, we go there. Uh, but I just give them because they're healthy and they are a fun treat that they enjoy. Walnuts, as you guys see, I always have walnuts as treats. These are the best nut that you can give them because um, I wouldn't recommend peanuts. They have a risk of uh, containing this bacteria that can uh, get them sick and kill them. They are also high in protein and not so much fat like other nuts. So these are kind of considered a superfood. So I do recommend walnuts as a treat in comparison to other nuts. And then I as well have these little, oops, I have here. So I have these little uh, cereal bits that, okay, that they absolutely love. <laughs> Luca needs to go eat it far away from everybody. And these are some of like those healthy, multi-grain, no sugar, organic kind of cereals, you know, those like, I don't know, those healthy brands. My mom buys it. They ended up really liking it. It's a little cookie treat. Uh, so they each get one or two after they have their meal. As you can see, they're all holding on to one, and it's really cute. Mango is eating hers. Yeah, yummy. And then Luca's holding his. And then Kiwi's holding his right here. And meanwhile, they're busy doing that. I'm going to prepare their fruit tray. So I serve them their fruit in this little bowl. I had no idea it was an ashtray. I bought it because it was glass and it was heavy because Mango tends to grab bowls and try and flip them over. So this is just to prevent her from throwing a disaster everywhere. I do have to keep an eye on them though when they're eating their treats because some of them finish it quicker than others or drop it. And then I don't want them to steal it from each other. Uh, so they each have to enjoy their own treats. Oh my goodness, you guys are so mean. You guys just stole a lot of treats from Luca. I feel bad. Luca, come here, have another one. Kiwi, stop being selfish. You keep dropping yours. Oh my god, okay. Uh, yes, where do you want to go? We want to go over here. So for fruits, I make a variety of... Sometimes they obsess over certain fruits every single month. This month, they are obsessed with raspberries. And they always like their apples, so that is what I'm going to be putting in here. So this is your little fruit bowl for today. Keep in mind with raspberries, it does get really messy. Uh, they do throw raspberries kind of everywhere when they're eating it. And the juice of the raspberry will stain a lot of things. So make sure that when you're giving it to them, uh, you're giving it to them somewhere where you don't really mind. Uh, and it's easy to clean those stains. So for us, it's in the kitchen. As well with the apples, um, I peel off the skin just mainly because they always throw the skin, they hate the skin, so I might as well just peel it off and save myself a mess. And make sure not to let any of the seeds in as they do contain cyanide and will kill your bird. I as well, just as a safety precaution, cut off any single piece of the apple that was in contact with the seed and just kind of try and focus more on the exterior. So they are <laughs> waiting for this. So I will bring it around here. Okay, mango. Yeah, let's bring Luca over. There you go, baby. Okay, Kiwi, let Luca in. Yeah. Okay. Are you still gonna eat more veggies or are you gonna eat fruits? Okay. Well, at this point, I'm probably going to just move the veggies just to give them a bit of space. Uh, I don't want them to feel too trapped, especially since Luca cannot fly. Mango, there is more than one raspberry. Oh boy. Can we eat a rat? Mango finished having fruits, so now she's having a bit more of those like cereal cookies. And then the stubborn angry boy decided that he wanted to eat. The Quakers in particular really love the raspberries. Uh, they're the ones who will mostly eat them. So these guys just finished eating their raspberries. So I'm just going to show you. I didn't give them too many raspberries, so it's not so bad, but you can see here that there are quite a few stains. 
that needs to be cleaned. So I'll show you guys afterwards what I do to clean them. And they make a mess on the floor as well. So we have towels everywhere and Patty, mainly these towels are for Luca since he is still a bit flightless. So just in case he falls, we want him to have a cushioned landing so nothing happens to him. Uh, and then Mango's up there. Hi, Mango. So once I bring them back upstairs, you guys can see that they also dropped quite a few raspberries there. Uh, we will go and clean this cage and as well clean upstairs because part of having these guys means cleaning pretty much every day. Every day. <laughs> okay, so more or less they're pretty much done with the vegetables. Some days there'll be more left over than others. Either way, I like to throw out in the compost the remaining vegetables. I don't use it or reuse it because I want it to be fresh every single day. And this when you store it in the fridge, once it's mixed in with all the powders and extra nutrients that I put in, it just looks bad and is not the freshest quality. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so at this period of time, we are ready to give them their last treat, which is the Nutri Berries. They've had walnuts, they've had fruits, they've had vegetables. Let me just turn off the stove here. I'm currently just baking something. It's so loud. So, Nutri Berries. Definitely recommend them. I wasn't sure if my birds would like them, but honestly, they're really great for even picky eaters. <laughs> Mangoes ready to receive them. I'm just trying to, some of them are kind of melted together. Uh, no. Okay, I give them each one. So mango, here's your nutri berry. Kiwi, here's your nutri berry. Luca, here's your nutri berry. You got it? Okay, there you go. So as you can see, they all eat it and enjoy it. Mango more destroys it and picks out what she wants. <laughs> Kiwi will really enjoy it. He loves food. He will eat and savor every little piece he eats and then you know close his eyes as he enjoys it see like that Lucas the same way he also likes to savor his food he really likes to eat it slowly and enjoy it they each get one and once someone finishes theirs like this one over here who destroyed her entire energy berry uh, it's a good way to teach them uh, to not steal from each other, even though it is an instinct. Uh, Mango does really well. When she finishes with hers, uh, she knows not to take anyone else's. He's terrible with it, but luckily he's a slow eater and just enjoys it. Mango, are you eating that? If anything, I distract her with... Um, once she's done with that and she's looking for more, I'll distract her with her other dried fruit that she really likes. Uh, she's the only one who likes it anyway, so nobody really gets jealous that she's having it because they don't like it. So that's what she has, but I like to give them a nutri berry each day. This one takes them a while to eat it. It's a good size. I mean, obviously, if your bird's larger, then maybe two would suffice, but just with one, it's a good size for them. So everyone's starting to get a little bit sleepy now. Uh, you see Mango tucking her footy. Luca is crunching his beak, also freening, so I'm gonna bring them upstairs. Uh, I'm gonna leave them upstairs, come back down, have lunch, and going to clean this cage and walk you guys through that process. So let's bring them upstairs for now. So whenever I leave the room, I always let them know, I'll be right back. I signal them like this, so then they know I'm gonna leave. Unless I'm gonna leave the house completely, which I'm not doing today, because I don't really need to run an errand or anything. Um, I usually would close this door just because um, in here everything is, you know, they can bite, everything is literally for them. But outside of there, I don't want them, you know, getting into someone's closet or bathroom and getting stuck in there or destroying something and, you know, I come home and find out about it. So it's better for them to be there. Also, just a quick tip that I did. 
They love to bite the door frames and destroy them, which is a really huge problem, uh, especially if you're doing rented. This is not rented, but you know, my dad is not happy about it. So I did stick cardboard on with hot glue and it's better for them to bite the cardboard than the door frame. So that is a lifesaver. I also put a towel on the door. That way, you know, they poop on the towel instead of the actual door. I do have a beware of bird sign, so, you know, I'm not responsible if someone comes in and gets hurt. <laughs> and as well, because this is carpet, I also put a, you know, pee pad over here. So they poop on this and not on the carpet because it is much harder to get stains off of carpets. But if they do end up pooping on the carpet, as you can see, we have kind of everywhere. We're going to clean this today. Um, but if they do, the best thing is to just let it dry and then vacuum it up. It will come right off. Don't try and like rub it off because it's not going to come off. It's going to just stain your carpet terribly. So I will be right back, guys. Be right back. I'm going to have lunch. Bye-bye. So now it's time to clean the cage. You guys can see it's really dirty everywhere. It is due for a really deep clean. I'm going to remove this tray first and just take out the paper so it doesn't get soaked. And this bottle is full of one part vinegar, three parts water, and I'm just going to spray it down, let it soak for a bit before I hit it down with the hose. This uh, as well acts an antibacterial agent, and so I don't have to worry about any of this fresh fruit uh, developing bacteria within the bars. Uh, it just gives it a safer clean so I don't risk my birds getting sick. Okay, so I make sure to break it apart into three separate pieces or however many pieces you need to break it apart to. It makes it easier to clean so you get all the pieces out. I also prefer to do it on the grass because, you know, there's nothing toxic or chemicals in there and the grass might as well get some extra water. So let's go take out the hose. day um but i still like to with vinegar spray and clean as you can see there are some stains here stains over here and just give a clean and change the bottom so that's what we're gonna do so because they're on the case right now i don't want to take them off they're kind of having fun i sprayed it on the paper towel the vinegar and water solution and you guys can use Paper towel, newspaper, you know, pee pads, anything that works, as long as it's non-scented and doesn't have any chemical base, it's fine. So I'm just gonna wipe down these sticks. Vinegar is pretty much the greatest thing you can use with birds. I have made a video about, you know, how to clean up your bird's poops and stuff, but the main <laughs> reason for vinegar is because a lot of cleaning agents have chemicals that will harm your bird and you know, they have very sensitive lungs, so maybe when you spray it, you know, you don't really notice it, it falls down, but for them, when they breathe it in, uh, it can kill them. It really can. So you want to use things that are natural, and vinegar used to be a cleaning agent way back in the day. It still is used as a base for a lot of cleaning agents. <laughs> oh my goodness, they're mad at me. Like I say, having birds means having a complete lifestyle change. So this means you're probably not going to be able to use a lot of things like scented candles or perfumes around them or anything like that. I'm just giving it a light clean. 
I will deep clean this another day. So you definitely want to be light cleaning everything daily at least and deep cleaning weekly. I know a lot of people so you can get by on a month. It just depends how messy your birds were. My cockatiel was very clean. I rarely ever had to like give a deep clean but my three babies up here are extremely messy so I do have to be cleaning very often especially because it is three of them and not just one. So it's just dependent on you know how many birds and how messy they are. Just uh you know Make sure everything's clean and there's no poop residing anywhere because you don't want that to cause a bacterial buildup and, you know, they can get bumblefoot from it. Uh, if they try and eat it, they can definitely get infections. Uh, and it is a hoard for more bacteria to grow. So just keep everything, you know, relatively clean the best you can. And, you know, if you do have a hose in a garden, power washing is always a really great way. Hello. Sorry, I know you hate the vacuum cleaner. I'm sorry I had to clean. At this point, it is 2.30 p.m. So, around this time, I either work on my shop, which if you guys don't know, we have opened an Etsy shop full of stickers and prints and so much more to come. So please check out the link down below. I will show you guys some examples of what we have in our shop. So I'll either be working in my shop or I'll be resting and watching TV, listening to some music or just spending time with them. But um, any errands that I do wanna do, I will do them around this time because around this time they're much more relaxed than in the morning. In the morning they are much more needy and attention needy, but in the afternoon they do tend to settle. It is important to note that we are currently in fall. As you guys can see, the trees are changing, which means the sun goes down much uh, earlier. So around this time, so around this time, uh, they are usually going to bed when the sun sets. I like to keep them on the schedule of the sun. So they wake up with the sun, they go to sleep with the sun. Um, unless it's nesting season, then I do try and get them to sleep even more. Um, because too much sunlight exposure does cause all those hormonal influxes. Around this season, they will be going to sleep around 5 p.m. and they will be waking up around 7, 7.30 a.m. Keep in mind, in the summertime, it is much earlier. I try and get them to sleep in a bit more, but usually in the summertime, they will wake up anywhere from 6 to 7 a.m. and then go to sleep at 9 p.m. Ideally, you want to keep them sleeping 12 to 14 hours. That is ideal for them, uh, especially because it helps maintain and control their hormones and um, extended daylight exposure leads to them thinking it is a nesting season. And you want to prevent that and you want to calm down their hormones as much as possible because you don't want them getting biting or aggressive because it is pretty bad during nesting season for them and for us because we get bit a lot. So around this time, <laughs> they're doing their own thing. Like I said, they calm down a lot at this time. Uh, Luca is just playing with whatever. These two, I really never know what these two are doing. They are just, um, I think they're trying to build a nest. He tries to build a nest every day. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And then my cute little Luca does his own little thing too. So they are much more relaxed and much more open to letting me do what I need to do, so we'll tune back. What are you doing with my sock mango? <laughs> Do my socks make you feel a certain way, mango? <laughs> what's wrong, Luca? What's wrong? Hey, what's wrong? Do you want to come over here? Okay, it is 4.34, the sun sets at 5, well, a little bit before 5 for them, but around this time, I do start to turn off the main lights of the room, just so that, you know, gives them a small indication of, hey, 
um, bedtime is soon and it also helps to indicate to them to start eating their dinner which is just their pellets and water. Um, Kiwi has accumulated quite the uh... never mind. <laughs> And there's still enough light coming in through the window today where, you know, they're not blind. Keep in mind, birds uh, cannot see in darkness, so please do be careful. Keep a light on if you're not putting them to sleep right away. Uh, something could scare them and they could fly and panic and hurt themselves because they can't see where they're going. And cockatiels in particular do get night fright, so you always do have to have a little night light on near them. Uh, these guys love to sleep in absolute darkness. Just gonna wait for them to just eat dinner and for it to be around five for us to start putting them to sleep. Oh, pretty boys. What's my pretty girl doing? Okay, so some of them are just finishing eating dinner. It is about 4 47 right now, so more or less 10 minutes before they go to sleep. <laughs> Luca's looking how to get in. He's a little intimidated by Mango still, but he's more okay with her. Hi, cats. Hey, yeah. You gonna eat dinner? Num, num, num. You gonna eat? Hi. Usually these two are the last ones to eat. Mango's always the first and then they share their food together. So they're just finishing up. It is 4.54. Uh, so in about six minutes, the sun will be going down and they will be going to sleep. So I have layered up a little bit extra because for some reason, Kiwi gets really mad when I put them to sleep and tries to kill me. So I protect myself in layers. <laughs> has a cover. <sighs> Kiwi just flew out to try and kill me again. And Luca has a cover for his cage because that's how he feels the safest and what he's used to. I uh, stay inside the room for just a little bit to make sure that they've fallen asleep, which is when their beats start crunching and, you know, they don't make a sound. I make sure to say goodnight and I love you to all of them when they're going to sleep. And then I will show you the after routine of once they are put to sleep. Because they are asleep now, I did want to mention something really important. Um, birds do need 12 to 14 hours of completely uninterrupted sleep. So because they are in my room, I will leave my room and whatever I have to do, I'll do it somewhere else. So while they're sleeping, you want to keep, you know, noise levels down. You want to, you know, make sure that it's dark and there's not people coming in and out. And, you know, birds are really light sleepers, so they will get woken up by the smallest things so luckily when i close that door it is soundproof so anything that happens outside of that door they can barely to anything hear it but we still do try to keep volumes at a respectable level and everyone does too so that's just a really important thing to note and to respect for your birds guys because you want your bird to get good sleep same as you you want to get really good sleep as well and you don't want to you know be cranky the next morning because you didn't get your full amount of deep sleep okay so at the end of the day it's so important to take all of the bowls that you have been using uh make sure to put the pellets away again in their bowls unless uh you know there's stuff inside make sure to dump out all of the old water 
And make sure you are using uh, stainless steel or glass because these don't harvest um, much bacteria like plastic containers. And you are definitely going to want to desanitize them. You can use regular dish soap, uh, hot water, uh, a lot of people sometimes use vinegar, uh, whatever works for you, just make sure they are desanitized so that there's no bacteria buildup and they are ready and dry for the next day's use. do want to be checking their water and changing it a few times daily especially because sometimes there can be poop inside the water or dirt inside and you don't want them to be drinking poopy water okay so because we already cleaned this outside uh earlier today i'm not going to give it a wipe down because that's already clean i did it after i brought them back upstairs um what's left to do is their mess here and i'm going to vacuum all of this uh, just dump out all the towels, same thing like I did upstairs, make sure to vacuum, wipe down any uh, food or poop that they toss everywhere. It is now around 5.30 and I am done everything I need to do. So now the rest of the day is just for me. Uh, just keep in mind in the summertime when they are awake for a little bit longer, I'm usually done a lot later in the day. Um, you can decide, you know, kind of what their routine is, but with their sun up, sun down usually is like the best kind of schedule you can give them. Um, so yeah, I hope that gave you guys a really good impression of how much work you really put into having a bird, how kind of it's a full-time job. Um, I really hope that this might have given you guys a different perspective if you did want a bird and you were kind of wondering like what I did in the day. Uh, so make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to hit subscribe if you want to see more of us. Check out our social media links down below and we will see you guys next time. Bye!